So ask yourself this question, are you prepared for two weeks with no access to power, water, or trips to the grocery store? All week we've been breaking down the latest earthquake research with our Environment Northwest team. Tonight, King 5's Erica Zuko finds out how some Northwest communities are preparing for the threat of the big one. I have about six of these uh, canisters ready. Take a look at Frank Lawler's earthquake kit. Crank radio. So power off, no problem, you just crank. Or his binder full of contingency plans, and you may mistake him for someone who's always been prepared. Oh, not at all. <laughs> but it was actually just in recent years he joined up with neighbors to create an emergency hub. What's great about this is the better you know your neighbors, the better prepared you're going to be to work together to work through a disaster. More than 50 grassroots groups of neighbors have created similar hubs across the city. One in a number of efforts that came after a wake up call to the threat of the big one. Many residents remember the Nisqually quake in 2001, shaking much of Western Washington, including downtown Seattle. These will happen someday. And a lot of us have lost what that feels like since 2001. So we want people to know, we want people to be prepared. Since then, the state has stepped up education efforts, holding drills to help prepare first responders and using earthquake simulators to show residents how seismic activity would impact a home. Despite the fact we will have an earthquake someday and it will be a big and potentially life changing event, you can survive if you take the action to get prepared now. For each of us, a big piece of the puzzle is preparing emergency supplies like Frank's. But for city governments, much of the focus is on finding and fixing vulnerable structures. In Washington, that means projects like retrofitting the Montlake Bridge on 520, upgrades to the West Point treatment plant to prevent sewage spills into Puget Sound, and updating the Green Lake Library. Records show there are still more than a thousand unreinforced masonry buildings in Seattle, but many are privately owned. When Portland City Council tried to require seismic retrofits, it faced pushback from owners who said they couldn't afford the upgrades. Schools also need upgrades for seismic and tsunami safety, but with budgets tight and voters opposing many levies, some fixes still hang in the balance. Back, protect your head and neck, please. But most earthquake researchers say, don't despair, prepare. Our hub. Do what you can, like in Frank's neighborhood, Madison Valley. The neighborhood is going to be what keeps us together. For Environment Northwest, I'm Erica Zuko.